The member for South West Coast. Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Great Ocean Road Environs Protection uh, Amendment Bill 2021. Now, this is the second bill that um, comes in to play to set up a new authority around the Great Ocean Road. Um, the last bill um, put in place the um, board and the CEO, but this is the bill that actually gives them the tasks and regulation or legislation um, around how it operates and what it has the authority to do. So in the past, the Great Ocean Road um, has been a subject to over 30 organisations that if you wanted to to actually undertake an activity um, such as run a business or improve some asset such as the Childers Cove um, beach area where you needed access via stairs that might have been falling down. There was just an onerous process to be able to get anything done. So clearly um, we are in agreement with the um, government and suggested as such uh, prior to the last election that we needed to set up an authority. Now, I'm amazed at what I just heard from the member for Frankston to say that um, we're uh, unnecessarily concerned and that um, we're spinning a lot of furfies. Um, at least he did admit there's a lot of work to do still, because I took part in the um, briefing last week from the, uh, the um, department, and thank you to the minister for um, allowing that, because we did need a briefing on a bill that's very, very large. I think it's over 100 pages. And um, it was quite shocking for me to hear that uh, the detail needed to be able to be sure that the authority will actually do what is intended, which is to look after the environment around the Great Ocean Road in a way that progresses the ability for the community to enjoy the um, work and protect the environment. So what we did see last Friday was many questions that were simply unable to be answered. What we were told was there was um, legislation going to be in place, but the questions that we were asking couldn't be answered because the necessary um, regulations to answer those questions was not even thought about, and they were the actual words. So this is supposed to make sure that the um, facilities are kept in a way that protects the environment and um, improves the enjoyment of the region. Now, I get complaints in my office a lot about the fact that the toilets and the facilities are so appalling that locals are embarrassed for uh, the visitors who come. That is not an infrequent um, event coming into my office of people concerned about that. Now, I go down the Great Ocean Road a lot. Um, we have visitors. Um, I did a Nuffield Scholarship some years ago when I travelled the world and people hosted me in their communities and showed me their beautiful parts of the world. Well, clearly, when they returned the favour and came to visit uh, me in Woolsthorpe, which is not in the LGA of uh, Warrnambool or... Um, um, well, it is in Moyne, um, but I would take them down to the Great Ocean Road to enjoy that. Now, people found it incredible. But um, one of our guests, I uh, might quickly state, um, from Austria, came back after eight years to visit um, my family and um, went down there with her family, who she'd brought over to uh, show them where she'd worked with us and, and played and enjoyed her, her uh, ch time in Australia working for us, came back to visit with her fiancé and mum and dad, took them down to the Great Ocean Road and said, my God, I can't believe the difference. It's just so run down, it's so overrun, it's, you can't park anywhere, it's appalling. So this was absolutely needed. But what we've seen in this briefing is that this legislation absolutely gives the authority, it's basically like a new council around the whole um, area, and it actually gives the... Um, authority, the ability to raise income. Now, it says that in, in the legislation, and it says also that the um, authority won't be reliant on state budget um, uh, ties. So this authority has to raise money to be able to do all the work that will need to take place to make sure it's run well. Now, I was given this briefing last six days, sorry, the legislation came in six days ago and I haven't had the chance to be able to consult properly because four days uh, to contact councils, council laws, caravan parks and businesses that may be affected is simply not enough and I'm still waiting for calls back from CEOs and, um, and the caravan park owners and, and other businesses because they are unaware from the ones I have spoken to and I spoke to Warrnambool City Council today and they said, but it doesn't involve us and I said, no, it does. So 
Uh, the maps that we got on Monday demonstrate that this now goes all the way through Warrnambool Township. Now, if you look at the map, it goes um, through Allensford, which incorporates Warrnambool cheese and butter. It then uh, goes across, um, cuts out the bridge in Allensford, which I find interesting, because that bridge needs a fair bit of money, and the, you know, some millions spent on it. So funnily enough, they've cut out the bridge because they don't want responsibility for costs, it seems. But um, then they go across to East Warrnambool, so there's a lot of homes there that are involved that have no idea about this new authority that they're going to have maybe some income generated from them to the authority. Um, then it goes across to incorporates the foreshore area, so that makes me wonder about the markets, the night markets in, um, that go all through the summer on a Friday night. Will those markets that generate an income that the Warrnambool City Council now get the income for, will that income go to the authorities? And if that's the case, who takes away the rubbish um, from those markets when that income may then go to the uh, authority versus the Warrnambool City Council. Now, if the Warrnambool City Council didn't know they were involved, sorry, I'll go on. It then goes across um, uh, Midfield Meats, a, the largest uh, employer in our region. You know, what's the implications? The authority said, sorry, the briefing we were told wasn't intended to incorporate private land. But in the bill, it actually says the authority, without the minister's approval, does have the ability to incorporate more land. So I'd be very nervous if I was running a business um, and wondering if, you know, permits were needed from the authority, uh, if this is another author authority, another level of bureaucracy, which is absolutely what it seems, because that's actually what was said in the briefing as well, that uh, there won't be less people uh, working on this. There will just be the same amount. So I don't see how efficiency is created if you still have to go through the same amount of people to get an answer, but another uh, bureaucracy called this authority. So I uh, was very, very nervous when I heard what was um, being proposed. Look, initially I thought it was more about car parks and um, I, I think it's you know fair when I've gone down to um, the Great Ocean Road and, and tried to park somewhere, it has been an absolute debacle. So if we've got a lot of international visitors who do need car parks, do need toilet facilities, it's absolutely reasonable that they share in the expenses that, uh, that services their needs while they're visiting. But there's no um, detail around that. And I ask that question, you know, I'm not um, a, a resident of the local area of the Great Ocean Road, I'm, you know, 30 or 40 kilometres away. So will I be able to go there um, and will I have to be charged for parking? What constitutes the word local? Um, because I consider myself a local to the Grampians as well, but, um, you know, that's probably an hour and a half away, but an area where I frequently visit as well. So it wasn't actually able to be clarified at all. So six days is not enough for consultation. I'm concerned about the businesses in my area. I think, I, I certainly think we should put this reasoned amendment forward that gives more consultation. We're not opposed to having one authority that does the right task, but when you've incorporated very sneakily parts of Warrnambool, and the Warrnambool showgrounds, the Friendly Society, the fresh markets at Lake Batobe, the Warrnambool summer markets, the motorboat hire people, the Warrnambool summer carnival, the Warrnambool Wolves football club, the uh, Jubilee Park caravan park, the Merivale rec reserve, don't even know about it. The councillors don't know about it. The council itself doesn't know about it. They actually said Warrnambool's not incorporated. I said, well, have a look at the map. It's quite clearly, I can tell you where it goes, Nicholson Street, down across to the railway line and across the other side of Dennington. It's right here. So it's very concerning and it hasn't been um, given the due diligence that government actually promised it would. We are not um, talking furfies here. This is what the department told me on Friday and on Monday I see Warrnambool included. So certainly... Um, this is a very, very concerning bill. We've seen a number of examples where the government have rushed legislation through, and who knows why this is a rush, not put the regulations in place that give people the respect of information, do it all in a way that keeps it all uh, under wraps, just like we saw with the camping um, waterways legisl uh, legislation that the government said they would consult and have regulations around and then what they have to do. They have to backflip on their... Well, isn't it? And, and there are so many, there are so many. The legislation around taking taking uh, the police from having to put people in cells for drunkenness, but no understanding of how that's going to work. This is how the government operates. All through secrecy, no detail, no respect of consultation, and uh, my community in Warrnambool are shocked at this, 
and have every right to more consultation. So I amend the, uh, commend the reasoned amendment to the House.